okay so now this is connection okay so we have created the connection here so the pop connection class we have created the reference that is gone and then driver manager the help of this driver manager we have called the get connection method here we have passed the url of our database so this way you can provide your url where you have to provide your username and password of database now after this we will write our statement our uh, query that we want to fire so for that purpose there is a class that is prepared statement this you have to use I'll write prepared statement ps is equal to con dot prepare prepare statement so that I will use here so we'll see a prepare statement so this you have to use here for giving for writing your query here for creating the statement here so I'll write here my statement that is insert into okay my query is insert into what is my table name that is student is my table name then after that I will write values and in bracket I will write question mark so I'm having how many parameters one two three four five six seven eight so six question mark I will put it here why I'm putting question mark because I don't know what data uh, right now I'm, I'm going to insert here so the dynamically it will uh, take the data and it, it will insert here so one two three four five six six and two eight okay so I'll write here one two four five six seven and eight okay so we'll check our database so how many columns we are having use the name that is one two three four five six seven and eight so eight columns we are having so eight parameters you have to pass here you have to give the parameters question mark question mark question mark question mark question mark and question mark okay so all that eight parameters I have put question mark here now for prepared statement so you have to import again the prepared statement class okay now then we'll go for next uh, step that is here you have to call again one function or method that is, that is with the help of ps object so ps reference so you have to call set string so this set string why to call this because it sets the designated parameter to, to the given java string value so the driver convert this to an sql worker and then it will give uh, it will assign or it will send to it to the database so now we have to have or send these strings these values that is your name you put your pwd this username password this string values these values you have to pass to the you have to send to the this query so that we can send with the help of set string and then you have to give the two parameters that is first you have to give the uh, column uh, that is your parameter number or parameter index now this this these these are the eight parameters their index starts from one so for first parameter which value i want to send that is i want to send u name sorry u name value then for second parameter so i will again call set string method here so there i want to pass second parameters okay two and the second that is i want to use that is upwd so this way i will continue okay so i will copy and paste so let's write uh, f name here this is my third parameter then l name here so that is my fourth parameter then next parameter is my u gender I'll write here phi the next parameter is u email it's 
number is 6 the next parameter is u course so 7 so remember these variables that whatever variables you are declared here that variables have to you you have to use here because these values that you are going to access it that that values you are storing in these variables in the string variable so uh, whenever you are um, sending the values to the uh, this statement this uh, SQL statement you need to use these variables here okay so so that they can access the values so then next final parameter is you mob so that is my eighth parameter so this way i have called the set string method here and with the help of set string i have sent the data to this this query that is inserted into query here so on this question mark this value will be replaced and the query will be called okay now after this i have to call okay other function okay a method that i have to call here so the method that i want to call that is execute update so i'll declare a variable integer i and then i will call with a ps object that is execute update which calls your this statement that is prepared statement whatever statement you have given insert into so this query this sql statement will be called or will be fired by using this execute update method here so after this we'll check whether our query has been successfully fired or not or executed or not with the help of if condition so if i is greater than zero so whenever query execute successfully it returns greater than one value okay so greater than zero value so we'll check if i is greater than zero in that time i'm, I'm going to display something that is i'll write out dot println right out dot println and here I will, I will write the response that i want to write that is you are you are registered successfully okay and then second thing i will write here i will write again uh, with the help of print i will write here p tag or i'll write here a tag and here in this a tag so i'll write a tag here so i'll write h ray is equal to i'll give the link of login.jsp file here so i'll use single quote here and inside this I'll right click here click here for login okay now you can see this I have written here in print statement so where did you where do you get this out object so already you know that out object is already created this reference already created here so that I am I'm using here for printing the uh, this text as a response so after that else block will define here so if that query will not exit uh, execute successfully that time will show error okay so error just will display error statement okay so this way the registration uh, is uh, will be done through this servlet that is a register servlet this is here it will accept access the values and it will write the values or it will insert the values with the help of this query on your database so this is about your register.java file register servlet now we'll go for next that is login uh, login.jsp file so in login.jsp already we know that we are having only username and password field so in username field i will add the name that is name equal to username 
and in password field i will again use name equal to password okay so these two things i have added here and now here i will do one thing that is in form i'll replace okay so i'll leave it blank okay now no, okay so this is your login.jsp file but before that what we have done here in uh, we have uh, used the registration we have uh, written the code for register.java but when it will execute so uh, you have to pass the reference of this register.java to your registration register.jsp file so in register.jsp file i will come to the form tag i'll go in form tag and in this form tag in this action I'll use the name of my reference. So I'll use here. Uh, just I'll use one URL that is uh, slash register. So later on, later on I will explain how to use this, why to use this uh, register reference here or URL is here. Okay. So right now, just remember to access the register dot Java file or to access the register class to uh, call the register uh, class methods. This reference has been added here in action attribute. Okay. So we'll return back to the login.jsp so we have given the name here so again the same thing i will do here it is in action attribute i'll give the reference of my login.java file or login so let this way and i will add the post method here so i'll write method is equal to okay so post method i have used here now i will create a login dot login servlet okay i already created i think login dot java file here oh sorry this is not a login with this okay so i will create the login servlet for this project to go in my login application in java resources uh, i'm having you can see i'm having register dot java file here so i'll right click go for servlet okay so in servlet i'll give the class name that is login and i'll click on finish button okay so already it has created the code so i'll remove this unused code which is not useful for us so I'll remove this code keep this only do post method because here again we are going to use post method only so here again in this code uh, i'll go inside do post method and in do post method what i will do here the same process i will repeat here so i'll go in register.java file so whatever things we have done here that is we have uh, set the content type html and we have called the gate writer method so i will copy that code here and paste it in my this method because we have to again use that uh, that, that things here okay now the same thing i will do that is we'll uh, i will access the parameter here so i'll copy and paste this these two lines here because i want to access username and password just i will change the uh, names of fields here that is the names of fill is username and password because already i have given the name here you can see uh the name is given username and the name is given password to the password field so that i have used here so for that purpose is two two variables i have de uh, declared here that is your name and your pwd so after this you have to again connect with the database and there you have to check whether your username and passwords are available in the database or not and after that you have to give the permission to the next page okay so here I will de uh, declare a variable that is boolean variable so that will be for just for track purpose so I'll set it false later on I will un understood why to use this variable but just now just remember that I have used a flag variable that I have set with the false value now I will use a try catch block here we'll go for catch block so exception ee and then in this I'll use we'll call print stack stack trace you can see that you know that print stack trace is printing the 
exceptions whatever exceptions are generated by this program so here again inside this try i will copy and paste this code and i need not to write again this code that is this database connection so i'll copy and paste this code in my login.java file so now you can see that the the thing that we have to change here that is you have to here you have to call select method because now we are going to ret ret return the rows we are we are going to find out the data from the database okay so here i'll remove this so select star from star from student where my view name where 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 my username is equal to question mark and password is equal to question mark so now right now i don't know what is username and password so i will get username and password through this these two variables that is your name and upwd so i'll again set i will write uh, i will call the set string method here so the same thing will happen here that is this will assign this your name to the first parameter and this will assign the upwd to the this second field that is password field here okay so after this we'll do another thing that is we'll we have to call this okay we have to call this query we have to uh, find this query so here i'll define i'll use a result set class and i'll use uh, i'll call execute query method okay so this query method i have this execute query method i have called here so that it can call so or so that it can fire this query it can execute this query this sql statement so here uh, it's saying uh, import result set so i will import result set because it is a part of your java.sql package uh, so what it returns it returns the table of data or uh, of your database okay so that we need here that is the result set will bind this data into a table so then i use this variable that is flag variable here now you can see that why i am using flag variable here so flag equal to i'll call next method because it moves the cursor forward one row from the current position so i'll call next method why why i will call because after returning the values after returning the uh, table here because it is this will return a table of values so in that table i am going to see uh, in the in the second row i'm uh, in the next row i'm going to see the values that is username and password so to access that values in the next row to move the cursor to in the next uh, row i'll call here i have, I have used here next method so then i will check whether my flag is true or not if it returns the value it will uh, if it is found if if it found the values in the next row it will set the value of flag to the or it will return the value true so if it is true then i am going to do one thing here so i have already told you that we are going to use here session management so we can implement session management with the, with the help of http session class so i'll create a session reference here so it should be session session is equal to request dot get session so here i'm going to create the session okay so with the help of get session i have created a new session so again it is saying okay so i, I will import the http session here okay now after that this i'll call this session okay i'll use session object here so with the with the help of this session object i have to call a set attribute 
method okay so here i'm uh, i'm going to create the session session dot set it mute So the last session. So session dot set attribute. So here set attribute in set attribute. I'll take first parameter that is my session name. So I'll use here U and M. so this is my session name where i'm going to store uh, the value of username so i'll write here u name i'll access the value u name access the value of u name and i will store that u name value into u n m the session variable i'm i'm creating so here i'm storing this value in this u n m variable okay so that i'm going to use throughout the pro uh, throughout the application and then after this i am going to use a class that is request dispatcher this, so this is one of the class that you have to use for forwarding the request to on another page request dispatcher rds is equal to i will use request object again here so request dot get request dispatcher so this method i will call and yeah, i am i am passing the uh, argument okay so i'll pass the argument that is my file name where i want to transfer the control so i'll use the file that is home.jsp so here i want to pass the control after login so here again uh, i will import this request dispatcher class now after this in request dispatcher there are there is a uh, method that is forward so you have to use forward method uh, you have to call the forward method here and this forward method comes with the request comma response parameter so that you have to call okay so this way you have to call your forward method because without this it cannot forward or it cannot uh, transfer the control to the uh, next file that is home.jsp so this way we have completed our if block where we have checked whether our username and password is available in database or not if it is available then it is going to store the session it is going to create the session okay it is going to uh, uh, store the value uh, for that session the website attribute method then in else block i'll do one thing that is in else block i'll transfer the request okay so with the help of same request dispatcher i'm going to transfer my control to same file that is login.gsp but this time i'm going to display something here okay so i'll display i'll display here username or password is wrong okay so this line i will display when username and password is wrong and after that i will transfer the control to the login.jsp again itself but here i will include login.jsp after this username and password is wrong line so i'll call here include method which will include my file so i will pass request and response argument here again okay so this i have done for login.java file so we are done about our login.java file login servlet so this is your login servlet where we are we have access the parameters username and password then we have done the connection database connection we have fired the query select query we have checked whether our username and password is present in the database or not if it is present 
then it will, it will create the session it will show the value username value in a session variable that is you name a uh, you know and then it is transferring the control to the next page or it is forwarding the control to the next page that is home.jsp and then if the if the passwords are username and password is wrong then it will transfer the control itself like this login.jsp and this is about that file okay so now we will go for the next thing that is home.jsp okay so see here we have used session management so to make this page secure that is home.jsp page again we have to use here the session management concept but before that let me tell you that uh, we have stored the database okay so before that we'll do one thing here we'll just uh, do one thing so i'll display here welcome to the first page okay i'll display this simple thing so so we'll do one thing we'll try this first and then we'll go for next logic so before that we'll try we'll run this code and we'll check whether our we are whether we are uh, able to do, do registration successfully and we are, whether we are able to do login successfully so here but before that one thing you i uh, i have told you one thing that is in register uh, dot gsp file i have passed this reference that is slash register and in login dot gsp i have passed this reference that is slash login so these two things i have done here so one thing i will do here uh, will replace with this register.jsp so here what we want to do that is you have to be edit the web.xml file so we'll go in build uh, sorry in uh, web contain directory web contain directory there is web inf in web inf there is lib directory in lib there is web.xml so here under web inf there is web.xml so go to in web.xml file then web.xml file here to provide your welcome file list so i'll remove i will replace this with the login.jsp because i want to show login.jsp first so i'll remove all these list okay so this is my welcome file whenever i launch my application will show the login.jsp first then after this i have told you that we have to do other configurations here so here you have to define your servlet so you will define your servlet so what servlet you are going to use so i will use here i will use another tag that is servlet name i will provide a servlet name to my servlet so i will use here my login so this is my first servlet okay then i'll provide the servlet class so my servlet class is login okay then after this i have to do servlet mapping so i have to map my servlet class with the url okay so so i'll do here again i will provide the servlet name so i'm referring which servlet that is uh, servlet name is my login and then i am doing i'm doing the url pattern i'm providing the url pattern so which url i'm using here is slash login okay so this url i'm using here to access my login.java file the same thing i want to repeat for other things uh, other servlet so i am having other servlet that is having other servlet that is the registration so my register this is my other servlet so its servlet class is register then after that the next i want to do that is servlet mapping so we'll copy and paste this code again and i'll write here my register and here i'll write the refer url pattern that is the register so with the help of this url we are going to access this register class that is the meaning of this url pattern here so 
now we'll try to uh, see that whether my registration and login is working properly or not so we'll see here so now i will run this application and right click on this project run as and then run on server finish